Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell. And of course, you are listening to the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual stream yard studio with a very good friend of mine justin williams justin what is up my brother jay campbell what's up brother how you doing man it's always an honor to talk with you man i was very very grateful humbled and privileged to be on your podcast the hidden gateway podcast a couple months back we had a very profound eye-opening episode and of course i said you got to come on mine and so here we are today. So let me give you guys uh, Justin's background or bio a little bit. So he's worked in various capacities in the health and financial sectors. And again, he is the host of the Hidden Gateway podcast. He's interviewed all sorts of amazing people. Billy Carson is coming next. At a young age, he had a very near death experience and opened his eyes to a world beyond, don't we all? With deep introspection, he realized that he had unique gifts to share with others. And that was what led him to start the Hidden Gateway podcast. And at the core of the Hidden Gateway's mission is Justin's love of spreading techniques to launch one of the paths to self-knowledge and to incorporate the divine whispers that always lie in each of our hearts. As I like to say, the sacred heart, the connection yes. to the higher self. Yes. Uh, brother, it's an honor, man, to have you here today. We got a lot to talk about, especially your book, which you've sent me, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, very honestly, uh, I've only read the first four chapters, but you know we're, you're going to fill it in because your story is pretty amazing. But uh, as I do, you know, recently, say last three or four months, as you and I talked on our show, um, what is your take on what is happening right now? Obviously, today, you know, for the purposes of the record, is uh, the fifteenth. Wow! So we are now literally, my brother, into essentially the fourth quarter. Right? We're two weeks yeah. away from the fourth quarter of 2022. The 2022 yes, year is almost passed. Uh, where's your take on where the globe, you know, is going? I mean, obviously the USA, as we know, is on fire. We're in a spiritual war, but maybe give me a one to two to three and maybe sure if you want to go longer out timeline of like where you see everything going at this moment. Yeah, man. Um, as we continue to live day by day, as we know, just more chaos and confusion is being pumped into the world, right? And yeah. and people are affected in such a negative way. You know, we have the financial crisis going on. We have the health crisis going on um, all around the world, right? And and we have the food shortage. It's just, just a lot yeah. of stuff going on, man. So I, I want to say my first thing that comes to my mind is unfortunately, but in a sense, it's fortunate because I believe these are some things that must play out right. in order for us to get to where we need to be. Right. And for those that have the eyes to see and ears to hear and the heart to feel, know that this is something that that must happen. Right. So I, I kind of liken it to a, a a woman when she's pregnant for nine months. She, she's she feels horrible, and but she knows something great is coming. Right. And then when she goes into labor, some some of the most excruciating pain that she may experience right. those birth pains. But on the other side of that is something so beautiful. This beautiful child is born. So that's what we're going through now. And without doubt, like you mentioned a second ago, we're in spiritual warfare, right? It's yeah. the light versus the dark, however you want to call it, however people want to see it. But that is what's going on. And I know that to be fact because some of the experiences that I've had over my life, specifically over the last two years, and we can definitely get into that later. But um, we're going to go through these hard times. <clears throat> people are going to people are going to suffer, man. Yeah. Um, as, as I mentioned before, we we hit go here. You know, I had an experience uh, with ayahuasca. I sat with ayahuasca um, about a year and a half ago, and um, I was told by spirit that there's going to be this mass purge of people yeah. because of the old jabby jab, right? Right. And we, we see that going into play, and it's going to get worse. In fact, there oh, are absolutely. doctors and scientists coming out now and saying that within the next several years, there's going to be so many millions of people that unfortunately are going to die from heart failure. Yeah. Um, autoimmune diseases, you name it. Um, so it's, it's for me, I mean, a lot of people will look at it as doom and gloom, um, but it's going to be, and, and, and for some, it will be hard times, but I always tell people, 
they must get right within the spirit, within the cells, and, and recognize that divine energy, that, that, that divine force within themselves to navigate through this chaos and confusion as things continue to get worse in this world and just look forward to what's on the other side. Um, right. A lot of doom and gloom talk, but we can't forget about the light. We can't forget about the warriors of spirit, the warriors of divine. We're here to fight this thing. And truth is, we already have the victory, man. Uh, we, we truly do. We, we truly, truly do. You beautifully said. Um, it's funny that, you know, you were saying about the heart stuff and, you know, the, the, the abnormalities and the side effects and all of these other things that, again, you know, allopathic, let's call them, you know, medicine, demonic, whatever you want to call them, reptilian, whatever, you know, the twin snakes and the serpent. You know, I've always told mm -hmm. Matt LaCroix that's a double entendre. But mm -hmm. the, the, the reality is, is um, they have engineered it so perfectly that they have no uh, legal indemnification. They, you know, have been safe harbored. They told everybody who, again, volunteer. I love that for the jabby jab. They volunteered to do experimental therapy on themselves that there's no recourse. You can't sue mm -hmm. the manufacturer. You can't sue the administer of the right. injection. So, I mean, again, it, it, it was like a gigantic. I mean, let's be honest, bro. And, you know, I can say this to you. It was a giant IQ test. Yeah. You know, totally. not only was it a soul test. We know that. We know this is spiritual warfare, but it was an IQ test. I mean, are you capable of discerning critically thinking you know realizing regardless of your stance on v's and i could get into a huge diatribe that all of those are bogus too you know that they're mm -hmm. money makers for uh big pharma for the rockefeller family foundation mm -hmm. but at the end of the day none of that matters you know are you intelligent enough to realize that they were telling you in a hundred different ways you know again a hundred different ways from sunday that this was experimental therapy and that it was not being mandated. You, you know, people were like told, well, you know, they said I would lose my job. Who gives a shit? <laughs> exactly. What's more important, your job or your life? There you go. Right. So all these people, again, and again, we're not here to condemn, judge or blame. We are here to, for the record, all these people who chose that path, chose that path from a soul level because that's what they needed. Mm -hmm. So that's perfectly okay. We are not here again. We're not God. We're not judge or jury. We are saying, Hey, at a soul level, you came, we know as we all do to evolve and grow your soul. And part of your path, part of the contract that you made with the divine was to experience that jabby jab because it would literally evolve you. Right. Mm -hmm. Because again, we know that we're evolving through contrast. There you go. So what's more difficult than potentially dealing with autoimmune or physical body death? Because we know our souls are infinite and everlasting and eternal, right? Yes, this physical body, this Jay Campbell, this Jess West, we will die, mm -hmm. right? But our spirit, our soul, whatever you want to call it, our energy, life force will go forever. So it's like right. there's no reason to be fearful of that stuff. But again, in my opinion, everybody is always choosing exactly what they need to grow and evolve beyond their physical avatar body. Again, in infinite lifetimes is my guess, right? But mm -hmm. it's it, it's crazy. I want to read something from the back of your book to shift to your book. Um, and this is from Alex uh, Takairis, the host of the Popular Skeptico podcast, who wrote a quote for your back. And he said, this is very profound. He said, the first step of understanding who we will become comes at the death of who we were. Yes. And as you know, I shared with you my story, You know, just as you're about to share your story, but Bro, we both know we come into the third dimension. You know, the great Walter Russell says that we come into the base of the jungle and the path is back to the top of the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's like we all are material. We all are physical. We all are in survival programming, right? Right, right. Very root chakra, very based, you know, again, service to self. And it's not until we have these experiences like each of us do, you know, whether it's a life threatening or a near death experience or a plant medicine journey or, you know, a shamanic event or whatever, where we are challenged perceptually of what is real and what isn't. And then once we're challenged, as you were with your ayahuasca, as I have many times with 5-MEO, uh, we realize that this physical body and these pursuits of shiny things and bling and bigger houses and faster cars and hotter women is all nonsense. Yes, it is. Well right? said. It's cool. It's cool to like learn this and it's cool to deal with this and go through it. But again, it's just part of the soul evolution process. And so, you know, what he was saying is that the death of who we were is our ego. Yes. 
But that, and again, I'm not saying you kill your ego because your ego allows you to survive, but it's the yeah. ego mind or the ego life, right? The, right? the Jay Campbell who's trying to get to, at, you know, I, I think of myself at 34, you know, I want to have 10 million in the bank at 40 and uh, a 401k uh, is at this level. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's the right. depth of that mm-hmm. that truly allows you to become who you are now, who I've become, who many people that I've interviewed on my show and you have interviewed on your show have become. And it's, it's really, truly just, just becoming spiritually aware. That it is spiritually aware. It's all about that awareness, all about knowing that we are one with the father, one with our creator. If we want to call him God, universe, yeah. source, whatever, you know, there, there are a million names for it, but you know, we are one with the creator. I liken it to a tree, right? You have a tree, it has its trunk, which is its base. And then you have these branches coming out and all these branches are a part of that tree, but each branch is having its own experience. So we're, we're essentially, in my opinion, we are one with the father and we are the father having this human experience. You know, we're, we're not humans. We're, we're spirits. We're, we're not humans um, having this experience. We're definitely spirits, you know, and uh, you hit the nail on the head with with the awareness piece, just being aware of who we are and not only being aware of who we are, but understanding and having knowledge of the power, that divine power that lives within. Right. You know, that power has been gifted to us from the right. Father because we are one with the Father to right. be able to deal with anything that we experience in this earth during this lifetime, anything. Now, there are other tools out there that we've been blessed with as well, but it all starts with self, you right. know, and that's been right. a huge part of my journey as I've gone <clears throat> from a young child till till now, developing and knowing and having that awareness of who I am. And that has definitely allowed me to vibrate to another level because I tell you what, and I'll get into it. Some of the experiences I've had, a lot of people would not have made it to it. A lot of people would not have been able to deal with what I dealt with and then be where I'm at in life. You know, I I had a lot of things going on. and, and, And one of the things, one of the huge factors in my life was my father, you know, who was a, who was an alcoholic and he was also a Marine, but, and he was very abusive, very physically abusive. But the part that affected me the most was the psychological abuse. Sure. sure. But as I went through my healing and and, and matured and and under, and and began to understand more and more, I, I, I learned that he was that way because he had a lot of things that he never healed from that he may not even have been aware of, you know, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now he he passed on in in 07. And, you know, for the last year, a couple years for his life, when he knew he was going to transition, he, he kind of went through this marathon of of, of forgiveness, you know, which was really good. And him and I had some, some really, really deep conversations, and it gave me a better understanding. But I know a lot of it started when he was a kid, he grew up very poor in Alabama in the South, you know, he was born in 1942. So imagine deep South Alabama in the 40s, what it was like for people of color, black people, black people didn't even have rights, bro. Exactly. Exactly. So he experienced a lot of that. But the thing is with my father, he said as a kid, he never even knew he was poor, but he did know, he did realize what he had to deal with from, from other people down there. So my grandmother gets sick. He had a younger brother and he, he then had to go into the Marines, right? Because my grandmother couldn't work. Uh, He was 16. He lied about his age and went into the Marines at 16. And so here he is, this, this 16 year old black guy in the Marines in the fifties at this point. And the amount of racism he dealt with. Oh, I can't even imagine, bro. Yeah, from from his not only his peers, but from from uh, senior level leaders, etc., uh, sergeants, or w- whatever they are, it was it had a profound effect on him in a negative way, and he didn't know how to deal with that. Right? Yeah. And that led to him, uh, you know, becoming an alcoholic, and he carried all this toxic energy with him throughout his life. And then he had a falling out with his father in the seventies, where his father wound up. St- like literally cutting cutting his arm very badly Dang. and they they didn't speak for about 30 35 years up until a few years before his death they finally they were able to mend that relationship which was a beautiful thing but um oh I went through a lot of trauma man I definitely went through a lot of trauma and uh you know I, I made it through and you know it, it's something that had to happen and, and a little while ago you you spoke about we we agree to these things right and totally it, we always talk about, well, hey, we manifest things while we're here and we can change the script. But to my knowledge, from what I've learned just through meditation and, and being at one with the spirit is we write our script before we even get here. That's right. You know, right. and we, you know, you know, and we, we have right. the ability to change it as well. Like when you talk about deja vu, right? When you're here and you say, man, I've, I've been here before, seen that person before, met this guy before, you know, That's right? that's because we wrote that. That's exactly right. In the spiritual world before getting right. here. That's why it's that's why it's somewhat familiar to us. So 
Well, to, uh, what, I mean, there's a lot you just said. There's a lot to unpack. I mean, you know, look, so my dad, you know, obviously is a white dude, but like, you know, he grew up in the depression. Uh, his dad and mom were like hard scrabble, literally Appalachian mountain, you know, trash mm. people, you know, literally like, you know, they were fourth grade, third grade educations, if that. So, I mean, we all have this. And then my dad, you know, just had um, a lack of limitation and scarcity mindset still does. I mean, he's 76 to this day and he still is as cheap as you could possibly humanly be. And so, you know, he was also very psychologically abusive just because his dad was psychologically abusive. But mm-hmm. like, and I, I, I you know, I, I, I don't think I told you this, but you know, where I played basketball at Georgia Southwestern university in America's Georgia, you know, I was one of only two white guys on the team. There was a seven foot uh, two, seven foot one and a half Austrian, you know, half Austrian, half USA. And then everybody else was a brother. And most of the guys, some really good players. There was a kid from Puerto Rico, Edgar Leon, but most everybody else was from either Alabama, uh, you know, South Georgia, North Florida. Uh, we had a kid, a couple of kids, one kid from North Carolina and a couple of kids from South Carolina. But everybody was like deep south, you know, brothers. And so I totally saw the racism. You know, I was, you know, in a very, what I would call, you know, very pro-black culture. You know, I was like one of those white kids that was like, you know, accepted because I was a really gifted basketball player and I could, you know, I was very athletic and I could play and everything like that. But I mean, I saw, you know, firsthand, you know, what you would call people of color. I mean, back then, bro, we just called them brothers. Right. You know, but I mean, like I, I, I saw it, you know, so I experienced it firsthand and it was like traumatizing for me. Mm. You know, I remember like, you know, being a 19 year old kid, you know, really a sophomore uh, and just seeing shit like walking into the, restaurants we would go to like travel on you know when we were traveling and stuff and just like looking at how some of the people that would be serving would be with me versus them and it was just like this is insane yeah so i totally get you know what especially in the south what it was like and and i and i and i you know i I have empathy for your father and i you know and i i'm I'm definitely grateful that your dad was able to like reestablish or re you know re like mend his relationship with his father and and also yeah you're right, man. Like your dad didn't have the tools that you and I have That's right. spiritually or the information, you know, to really like go within, you know, to find himself. And, you know, to go back to also what you were talking about the self, you know, the whole purpose of us, you know, being here is obviously to evolve and grow our soul, but it really is to reconnect with our higher self. Mm-hmm. Because as we said on our podcast previously, like when you connect with your higher self and you recognize that your higher self is literally, as you said, I am my father or one that your higher self is your connection, your access point to divinity through your sacred heart. Beautiful. I love how you say feel with your heart, right? So when you are allowing your heart to, 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 to govern your life and to lead through, you know, by example, through your heart, again, your sacred heart, your higher self, which again is your access point to Christ, the Christ, the Christos, Yeshua. I actually like to call it the light of being, so it's like, like the, energy, <laughs> the energy, right, and frequency of everything and nothing. And so when you're literally rolling with your heart, you know, as your guide and leading you, you're you're always going to respond out of love versus react out of fear. Yes. Which is what like 80% of society does, right? Yeah, you react right, right. out of fear. Something happens to you and you get agitated. Your ego or your survival programming instinctually says, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like you, you instantly want to like fight back. Right, right. But when you're, when you're here and you're getting your higher self as your guide, you're going to think about it. You're going to be more withdrawn. You're going to be more observant and you're going to think of what you're going to say, which is allowing you to respond out of love. And as you know, responding out of love is sometimes extremely difficult. Oh, very difficult, Jay. Absolutely. That's that's to get to that level, to get to that point spiritually with self to respond out of love. That takes a lot. For me personally, it took a lot of vulnerability, right? It took me, I had to be very vulnerable. I had to look myself in the mirror per se and and say, okay, this is who you are, raw and uncut, man. Right. You know, you you because of the abuse you went through, you became this quiet, introverted guy who had these fears about himself, had fears about life, um, wound up dropping out of high school. That made me feel like I wasn't good enough. Um, You know, my parents, especially my mom, who's who's highly educated, she's a PhD. You know, I always had this thing programmed into me, go to school, get your college education. So I felt like, oh my God, I let her down. I let myself down. What is life going to be like? Who am I going to become? 
And I, you know, I had to really look at myself and become very vulnerable and say, you know what, Justin, that's okay. That's right. okay. Right. That that is not what your plan was. Because if we, if you understand that you are one with the divine, that's right. Then you then understand that you have nothing to worry about. That's right, man. That you have a chance Yo. to do other things, you know, and it's unlimited, it's, it's infinite what you can do and, and what you can feel with love from that heart space when you become vulnerable. And as you talked about ego, setting that ego down a little bit, right? Not right. totally eliminate it, eliminating it, like a lot of people say, because you need your ego. That's you right. Your, your ego, ego keeps you alive. I mean, if you're right. in a fight or flight situation, you know, the right. ego, you know, you're crossing a street and a truck is barreling through a red light. The ego keeps mm -hmm. you from dying, right? That's but right, man. That, that's right. Harness it. It's about yeah. harnessing it. It's not you know what I say? it or yeah. you know, suppressing it. It's uh -huh. harnessing it so that it's only coming out when it's absolutely necessary. Right. See, what I like to say, I tell myself, Justin, you got to tame the beast. That's right. You know, I tell myself mm -hmm. that. And one time I had a vision where it were, were these, these dogs, it was like three or four dogs and I had them on a leash and I started to, to think about something and it started to, to kind of piss me off a little bit. And these dogs just, they, they kind of went wild, but I, then I said, Hey, chill out. And then it came to me, Justin, tame that beast within, you know, but it takes time to get there, man. It takes well, time call, to get I there. I call that beast within. I don't mean to cut you off, but I mean, we're, uh -huh. we're talking profound stuff right now. The beast within, when you really get to it, is your reptilian consciousness. Ooh, okay. It is okay. the left brain, which harnesses and controls the ego, which again is, it, you know, logic, you know, rationalistic. It's not the heart. You know, you said, you know, uh, eyes to see, ears to hear, heart to feel. The feeling is what allows us to be. Because when you're constantly thinking, 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 you know, you're not being. And again, if Yeshua, a.k.a. the Christ, if, you know, whatever we want to call it, the higher self is the light of being, then you have to be more. And being is sitting in stillness, sitting in nature, sitting in introspection, contemplation, meditation. That's being. And if more of us would just learn to be, because it's great to think. Because I'm a mm -hmm. thinker. You're a thinker. We're doers, mm -hmm. right? We create mm -hmm. all the time. But like... You got to balance creating and thinking and, and doing with being. That's what's Wonderful, most man. important. Man, that's why I love talking to you, Jay, man. You always <laughs> dropping gems on me, brother. Always dropping the gems on me, man. That's so good. Man. Hey, man, I'm learning from you, bro. I'm learning from you. But, I mean, all of us are walking the same, walk, you know, I would, what I would call path, but it's also an energetic wavelength. Mm-hmm. Because you yeah. speak the same language that I speak, and when I speak what you hear or what I hear when you speak, it's like, boom. The lights come on, you know, I mean, right now, dude, like I know you're, you have a light behind you, but like you have a very high energetic field that I can literally see, wow. you know, in this transmission right now, um, because it's just who you are. You know, you are a heart based, heart centered man, you know, and there aren't a lot of us, unfortunately, at this current moment in time on the planet, but there are more and more of us becoming, you know, this person, this heart centered human by the minute, man. Like it's happening yeah. across the planet. Yeah, man. The time is now. People are, are are waking up, if you will. People are, um, you know, becoming aware and and taking advantage of those gifts that that we all have within. And you know, like we talked about earlier, when you, you early on, you asked, well, where are we headed in the next couple of years? You know, um, we're going to need these these spiritual warriors, man. You know, yeah. we we we're in yeah. God's army. And we right. need to to fight, man. Um, don't know how we're going to get it done, but I know it's going to get done, man. You know, yeah. um, we, we have you. everything yeah. we need. So Yeah, I mean, I mean, bro, that's what we're being prepared for. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. It's funny because I just thought of something as you said it. I'm so different uh, consciously now than where I was just a year ago or two years ago. Like, you know, in, in the past, and this is random, but it's so perfect, you know, like today, my new assistant who's doing her best and it wasn't her fault, but she compounded it. 
I, all the people, including yourself, that were on my podcast schedule today were like literally two hours in advance versus mm -hmm. where they should have been. And I originally told her like, no, I think it's, I think Jess is at one today. No, Jess is at three. And this other guy's at one. I'm like, dude, I don't think so. But the truth was, is that we were both right because I was in Mexico and it was the central right. time zone jammed up Google. Oh. So when she entered it, she entered it right. But uh, central time being, being there on Google screwed me. So it like sent you a wrong invite, which again, you were at one because that's what I sent or that's what my original, my previous assistant sent. And when mm -hmm. she sent it, it got jammed up. But the bottom line is why I'm saying this is that, um, dude, normally I would be so mad. Uh-huh. Like I'd react and be like, what are you doing? What am I paying you for? Like you screwed up right. every time you screwed up my morning today. Like I, you know, I, I thought I had an 8 a.m. podcast. So, you know, I was doing my cardio at 6 a.m. and I could have slept a whole nother hour, but like I didn't even get mad, bro. Like awesome. I, I thought about it. I didn't even like react in any way other than like, hey, no problem. It's all good. You know, I, I my day started earlier. Uh -huh. so uh -huh. I, I, but I think I wish I could say it's all me. I think there's also partially an energy of this planet right now. You know, I just saw something that Ken Schwartz sent me this morning about uh, the sun. And we are literally going into a the Oort, the, Aort, the what they call the Oort cloud. And so there is massive amounts of cosmic energy beaming or blasting this planet right now. And just, it's just my opinion, you know, and obviously I've read a lot on this, but those of us living, you know, north of, the um, line in the sand, so to speak, or the line of integrity, as Hawkins says it, you know, up here in the, in the uh, willingness, acceptance, harmonious, forgiveness, understanding levels, we are having more of our latent DNA firing on. And mm. the people that are down here in the root chakras, again, vibrating in victimhood, shame, you know, anger, frustration, they are going crazier. So it's, again, it's this equal but opposite energies. Wow, man. And these huh. cosmic energies are making people that are awake more awake and the ones that are asleep more asleep. So it's interesting to see that. But, the, dude, you can see that every day. I mean, you, you and I know as we talked off the air without getting this video deleted, uh, they still don't even know what's happening. Yeah. You now you could exactly. say to them, well, like, did was the person jabby jabbed? And they'll be like, Well, what does that have to do with anything? And you're like, well, Right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you're that's right. That's where they are. I mean, that's yep. that's literally where they are. So it really is true. I, I think these energies are making where you stand consciously it deeper embedded. Wow. So if you're raised consciousness, you are becoming more conscious. And if you are closed and asleep, you're you're the door's being shut. Wow. So where does that take us? Where does that well, take? I mean, us? well, so I was going to say, and I'll, you, you know, your insight more important because you're the, the person being interviewed, but like, I would say that it is just setting us up for the new earth mm. and it's allowing those who are a quote unquote in resonance to continue and maintain their coherence and improve mm. to move into that state of awareness or consciousness or frequency or dimension or whatever you call it. And those not, to move further away, which again, ultimately, and again, I don't know, I'm guessing, you know, I've read a lot of, uh, you know, what's her name? Um, the lady, uh, what is her name? Uh, Dolores Cannon. Dolores Cannon, you know, yeah. She talks, yeah, she talks about the new earth being made up of only people of the highest vibration. Yes, she does. So maybe that's how it happens. Maybe what's happening now is the people that are closed off and becoming more asleep, maybe they just go to a new planet a new state of awareness that's more relevant to their vibration which is clearly low down here mm -hmm. and us and people like us which more and more are becoming every day move off into that different frequency i don't know bro but it seems like it could be possible that, that totally makes sense and as we vibrate higher and they vibrate lower if you will they they won't even be able to penetrate that's right it's almost like they will disappear bro it's yeah. like the bible remember the bible's I, I forget what chapter of the bible but it says Two men in a field, one man disappears. Mm. So it's like the frequency is so uh, diverse that the higher vibrators, let's just call them that, the, you know, those in resonance and coherence just literally just blast out. Mm -hmm. They vibrate into a whole new standard of, of, of beingness and those not, you know, stay at their level. And again, there's no judgment in saying this because again, the people vibrating where they're vibrating are going to stay where they need to evolve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the people vibrating higher go to where they need to evolve. Wow. 
Wow, that's deep, brother. And then that makes me think of when we talk about spiritual warfare, right? If you have the ones that are vibrating higher, just going going past the moon and, and the ones that are, are are going low, going going deep down. And then <clears throat> where does when we talk about spiritual warfare, it makes me think, and I'm very curious where that comes into play, because there's gonna be something that's gonna pop off, right? I know of course uh, we, we we talked about what what Europe may be facing within the yep. next couple months. Yep. Um, you know, and and what a lot of people here or around the world for that matter may may face uh, health wise due to some of the decisions they they've made over the last two right. years. Right. Uh, so when we when we talk about that spiritual warfare and these these demonic entities and energies, um, you know, I, I definitely believe they're they're going to be trying to come at the ones that vibrate higher and, and go harder at the ones that are already in that lower space. Totally. Uh, wow, man. Wow. Well, so somebody just wrote this in the group that I just invited you to, and that again, I apologize. You should have been in a long time ago. I thought for sure I invited you, so I apologize. But somebody just literally wrote this in the background. He said, that's the beauty about it, folks, choices. None of this will be forced into us or upon us. Mm. You choose. That's right. They cannot touch you if you don't play the game. And this is what Look I was talking to you about marriage, which I won't yes. go into because I don't want to visit anybody. <laughs> but, but the reality is the entire third dimension, as we talked about on our first podcast, is unraveling. Mm -hmm. All systems that are beholden to it, which is finance, politics, medical, education, everything, bro, technology, they will all crumble at some point there. As you said earlier in the show, it's happening now. All you have to do is look around again. eyes to see ears to hear hearts to feel. You see, you know, you understand you're aware of it. Um, but dude, we do have to choose to opt out. He says, and the game will be getting harder and harder going forward to get you to play and remain opted in yeah. to their negative frequency, but only those of us who continue to stay opted out yes. are going to make it through. Right. And it, it won't be easy. And it's going to be no. the biggest challenge ever. Biggest challenge of our lives, bro. But obviously being aware, but as well, just equally as important is having that focus, right? Staying yeah. focused in right. on the divine, right. being in the eye of the hurricane, the eye of the storm, right. but having that peace. And That's we're right. built for that, brother. We're built for that. I mean, we're, bro, we're, we're soldiers in this, man. We're you soldiers just, in this. We are, but you just said it best. I mean, it is going to be difficult. I hate saying the word hard because, again, I think everything is perceptional. Mm -hmm. But we are going to have loved ones, bro, that are going to go the other way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we're going to have to be strong enough to say, you know what? This is their soul's path. This is their mm -hmm. journey and we do not have a right, as I said last time too, and I know remember talking to you about, I just had a deja vu moment of spiritual violence, right? Like it's not yeah. our job to awaken anyone. It's right. not our job to tell them what, you don't see what I see, right? No, like we don't their that. path. That's right. That's and right. so if a loved one, a son, a daughter, a wife, a uncle, a dad, a mom, a brother, a sister decides that they are going to go the way that needs to evolve their soul, which is the opposite of where we're going. You let them be. Let them be. That's their journey. That's their path, man. Absolutely. Yeah. And then that started with me. I've had, I've had several family members, a few that I've been very, very close with over the years. But because of my stance and my beliefs, and, and not even my, my belief, I don't even like that word belief. For me, knowing. It's, like a, a knowing. Knowing. it's a knowing. For with me and my knowings, they 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 don't want to deal with it. You know, right. and and I don't want to deal with their foolishness. They have they have a lot of things going on because they're in that red area that you yeah. that we see on your chart That's there. Right, man. You know? And everybody, by the way, look, if you're watching this show right now and you hear us talking about this, you know, higher vibrating, lower vibrating, you've all been there. Mm -hmm. Jess and I were here. Yep. Our parents yep. were there. Their parents mm -hmm. were there. It's literally the rite of passage. Again, you come in at the base of the jungle and the path is to the top of the mountaintop. There it is. That is the spiritual path. This is yep. everybody faces this. And again, I like this statement from Hawkins, right? Like we're all walking the same path back to perfection. Some are walking faster than others, but no rate of speed is different from another. Oh, beautiful. I like that. I like that. So it doesn't matter how long it takes you from go to here to here. You're still going to get there. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So it's like the Nissan commercial. Again, another deja vu movement. Enjoy the ride. 
Enjoy the, <laughs> Enjoy ride. the ride. And that's exactly what each and one of each and every one of us should be doing. Enjoy the ride. No matter what we go through, no matter what we experience, of course totally. there are going to be challenges. But you know what? Things don't happen to us, they happen for us. That's right. You know, so we're, we we go through those challenges, but they're experienced to make us grow, to make us go higher up on that chart, to to be closer to the Christ. That's that right. divine energy, man. And, and, Bro, every and, bad thing that you and I have had happen to us, and again, I know bad is perceptional, but everything that we have ever defined as a collapse, a debacle, you know, a horrible thing was literally the greatest gift mm -hmm. because yes, it was the hardest things that make us evolve the most. Yeah. The, yep. the, the toughest, most difficult obstacles in our path are the greatest contrast providers. And the contrast is allowing the soul to truly grow and evolve. And I'm telling you, man, like I know through, you know, just from knowing you from a couple of podcasts now that we've had similar past, you know, we shared our you know upbringings and stuff and who we know and, you know, grew up with in the bodybuilding and the fitness right, and all right. that stuff. And so it's like, again, like minds, you know, like spirits, like energies. But the reality is, is like all the things that we at one time in our life labeled as like, oh man how am I going to get through this was the greatest gift. And that, and so when you get to that point now where you're like seeing something in your path and I won't mention names that I'm dealing with in my own personal life, but it's like, if you're still hung on to the energy of negativity in defining it, then you aren't really looking at it as the gift that it really is because anything now, especially when you're at this level of awareness that you and I have, and again, a lot of the people that watch my show are definitely there. You should just drop your freaking drawers and like be like, yes, bring it on. <laughs> because now I am ready to receive whatever gift and testimony you, you know, source, God, creation force, you know, Christ is going to give me. Because like you said, I consented to this before I even showed up anyway. We can't lose, Jay. We don't lose. Never. We don't come. lose. Whatever Never. the challenge, we don't lose. Exactly. That's that's the beautiful thing about it. Totally. That's that's the love that's involved from the Christ, from the divine. Totally. For because you know it's based in love and, and and it's within us. And once we understand that, man, it it just changes life forever. But on the other hand, that fear is a mofo, right? That's right, man. Which is which is which is a, a, a energy that holds a lot of people back from getting there. You know, and, right, and right. I know I carried a lot of that for years, you know, for years. One of the things that that allowed me to pivot, if you will, was a skydiving experience I had in 2020. You know, one of the the most challenging weeks of my life leading up to that jump. Right now, if you would ask me years prior, would I go up 20,000 feet in the plane and jump? Oh, hell no, no, that's not me. Not happening. Won't ever do it. But. I began meditating in 2020. I began the gateway experience. I think I told you about that. Yeah, where you I did. Yeah, had started doing those, those meditations and having those out-of-body experiences, et cetera. But spirit spoke and, and led me to go up in a plane and do it. And I, I resisted, man, for several months. But you know how it is, man. It just tugs at you, tugs at you. And I just knew it was something that I had to do. And so, man, I went up in that plane and uh, I remember waking up the night of, or it was several hours before. It's like, I forgot the exact time on the clock, but I looked at the clock because my wife had got up to use the bath, the restroom. And uh, as it woke me up and I looked at the clock and, and then spirit spoke and said, look, look, look up that number. Cause I'm really, I'm big into numbers and the meaning behind yep. the number. And that number, I looked it up. It was fear not. And that of just course. gave me more positive energy to go through with it. But I did it, man. And just going back to that fear, the biggest thing I learned was how to control fear instead of letting it control me or allowing it to control me. I learned that fear is a bully and the fear even fears something. And what that is, it fears itself. It fears not being able to make you fear any longer, you know? And, and the great thing about it, when you deal with fear, when you don't try to go around it, when you don't try to avoid it, is I always say God places the very best things in life on the other side of fear. That's right. So people just have that knowing and, and go through those challenges, those fearful times. It's something so beautiful, something so epic, so something so iconic on the other side of that for you. And it's it can be life changing. It, you can you can do a, a total pivot. That's right. Into another direction, you know, but but it's hard. It's hard. I'm not saying that that it's easy and but but it's it's, it's possible. It's possible. You just have to deal with whatever it is. And, and it, it goes back to being vulnerable and, right. and, and letting that ego down a bit. Right. Vulnerable and, that, vulnerable and surrendered. 
Yes, there you go. I like that. Surrender. I like that. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below the peptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Yes. But I mean, so when- bro, you just said a lot of amazing stuff to unpack. And I want to go back to fear because like, I, I mean, we can talk about this the rest of the show, man. Like 80% of people are literally living in a fear-based consciousness. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like you said too, we all are there at some point in our life. And I, I love to say, and you said a lot of great things that I really, there's not much I can add, but I would just say that you have to get to a place where you really are living only in the moment. Oh yeah, man. Because the future hasn't happened and the past is meaningless. Mm -hmm. The past only has what we give it power. And again, you know, a lot of women, and I'm not throwing women under the bus, but a lot of women, you know, like we talk about how they're elephants and they hold on to things. That is literally the cause of all of their suffering because the things that they hold on to are totally irrelevant. You know, and again, it's the consciousness of women, you know, really from religion, the brainwashing of all the Abrahamic teachings, you know, like Monica's mom, dude, Monica's mom literally used to tell her when she was growing up as a kid, my wife, Monica, that Monica, you know, she was from a ranch in Culiacan, Mexico. If you care, you worry. (laughs) Now imagine training your daughters and she did that. She had two daughters and two sons, but imagine training your children with the idea that concern equals worry. That's the most ludicrous, life-shortening, disease-causing mindset. Because, I mean, again, we know, and you know, we talked about this previously too, but we definitely know that disease is created from a lack of forgiveness. Yes. If you are dying from cancer, from heart disease, from any, you know, again, any name any one of the major diseases of aging, you know, Alzheimer's, dementia, neurodegenerative disorders, whatever, uh, you have someone to forgive. And so many people break down in their lives at some place, you know, a lot of developmental disablement happens at six, right? You know, we're traumatized at six by something our parents said, by the way, I never shared this with you. I'll do it now. Um, There was a massive developmental disablement for me at six myself. And I did a uh, regression hypnosis session with Rebecca Taylor Shaw and we found it. I was literally writing with a crayon on the back of my mom and dad's brand new couch. It was like this velour, you know, in the Mm seventies, you know, brand new and they were poor. And so having this chair, I mean, this couch was like the greatest thing for them, you know, because material and status, but like I was writing on it as a six year old kid. And my dad came in and went ballistic on me. And so I regressed. And I kept that in all the way up until I had this thing two years ago. I had this, you know, regression. So, so, but literally, it was like a Jedi mind trick. When we discovered it, she was like, "Okay, wow, man, worthy. you can let that go." But I mean, all of us have these events in our life that truly disable us, and then we come from fear. And you yes. know, and I know my wife's is, you know, her mom saying that to her. I mean, dude, imagine. And again, I love my wife, and you know, she could give you a thousand things that I do wrong and my issues, but like when you're such a good caring human being and you're so concerned about helping people and giving your heart and doing all these things, like imagine laying in bed at night thinking about, Oh my God, what about Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so-and-so? Do I leave the back door unlocked? Mm -hmm. You know, we go away on vacation. Did the dog get fed? Is the water Mm -hmm. out? But so many people live their life from that fear-based state of consciousness. Yeah. Focusing on things that have never happened, will never happen, right? Because I think the statistic is, is that 98% of things that we worry about in our life never even happen. Oh, yes. True. So true. So, so true. I mean, think about living from that place of consciousness, which again is totally fear-based mm-hmm. versus living in the now moment, heart aware, surrendered, you know, again, at a place of, you know, you know what? This is a gift. I'm grateful. I'm alive. My fingers work. My toes work. I'm here. I'm having this amazing podcast with this amazing bright soul. If you're not coming from that place, you know, and again, I know we have our life and we have things that happen every day. And, you know, there's always a choice. Again, you can respond out of love or react out of fear. But like, if for the most part, you're conscious of being surrendered and not living in the past or the future, 
your life is going to be joy, bro. You are going to be mostly enjoying the ride. But so many people literally live from that fear-based consciousness from what if. Yep. What if. What if, what if never did anything for anyone, man, but uh, nothing but fear, <laughs> Not, did nothing but brain fear. Now, I have a question for you, Jay. You, you talked about that experience with your father after you wrote on the back of the velour couch, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did you forget, did, did you forget about that? Was it d- like deep in your subconscious? And then it came out during that, that session you had with the lady or is that yeah, something bro, that's you, what happens. That we, we that's amazing. Late it. So we, but all of us can do these. That's why I tell people all the time, like, look, man, if you have something that you seem to can't overcome, I mean, I could give you a million things. I mean, I know some people do that literally wake up in the middle of the night and eat uh-huh. Uh-huh. very fit people who have this like compulsion to wake up in the middle of the night and eat. These are always due to latent traumas that we have buried in the subconscious. Yes. So for me, you know, and I didn't know what it was ultimately was causing me, but, you know, it, it, my desire to um, always be like just very, very neat and anal retentive was caused by that. Like it was like, oh, I can't do that ever again. Yeah. Yeah. So then yeah, you live yeah. by like hidden motives and hidden rules that you know, right. don't really exist. Exactly. So she discovered that, but I mean, it's a great question. So, I mean, I would assume that like every one of us has five or 10, or maybe even some of us that are really traumatized, you know, 20 to 30 of those things that can really truly be uncovered. And once you uncover, you know, the, 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 you know, let's call it the, the, what do you call it? The, um, the hidden motive is uncovered. The consciousness is free to just expel it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it just really resonated with me when you said that, because it reminds me of the experience I had. So I told you about how my father was very abusive. Right. So there, yeah. there was something that happened like right soon before my father died. You know, he went through this this marathon of, of apologizing to everyone he felt he did done wrong sure. with the, done wrong with sure. you. So we had many conversations. And in one of those conversa- conversations, he apologized for something that happened when I was two years old. OK, so I remember he, he worked for we live in the metro Detroit area, he worked for GM, big three. Right. He worked afternoons. He went to work about two or three in the afternoon, didn't come home until about um, 10, 11 o'clock at, at night. Um, but he, he might have even been, you know, uh, working days at this time. But he came sure. in from work. He had had a horrible day. I ran up to him and said, Daddy, 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 two years old. I love you. Good to see you, Daddy. He picks me up and he slammed me down on the ground. Right. Damn. And he apologized for that. Now, I don't I had no recollection of that. Right. Of I course. Totally didn't. But but when he told me this, Jay, when it he just told boom, me this, brother, came back to you. I had the vision. I saw it clear as day. And I can see it now. I, I, I see the hallway in our house at the time. And this had to be like in 1979, 1980. Right. Clear as day. I, I saw it, anything like that before. It just came back, but that was necessary because that was a part of my healing process, right? Right. And something that I had to experience in order for me to help other people understand why they may be suffering and unhealed in in whatever they've they've gone through or experienced. So when you said right. that, that just it made me think about that, man. It was it was something else, and you know, I I got. You know, I got bad again, that that physical and, and, and illogical abuse. I remember one time when I was about five years old, again, my, my mom worked days, my dad worked afternoons, told my brother and I to to, to stay in the house you know, until my mom got home. We, were, we we stayed at home for about an hour until my mom arrived home from work. You right. know, little I'm five, my brother's about seven. As soon as he leaves for work, we open up the garage door, go in front of the house to play with our friends on the sidewalk. We're out there for about 10 minutes. We see that. 1980 whatever blue bonneville turned that corner coming back to the house <laughs> oh no we, we run <laughs> we run in the house man he comes in there and you know this is like what early 80s remember those four or five inch thick leather belts back in the day man he, he had one of those with the with the huge belt buckles on them oh yeah and he made a strip down to our trousers man and just went to work for literally 20 30 minutes damn bro. right i had i had welts the size of softballs yeah. baseballs all over my body i ran and my brother got the worst of it he took that belt he wrapped it around my brother's neck and just drug him through the house for about five minutes man wow while hitting him literally hitting him with his other hand man so that those are you know some some of the things i experienced and then one time he uh he um you know him and my mom you know he he, he slapped my mom up a bit you know and then they were arguing and he went and grabbed some knives out the kitchen and uh 
chased her out the house. He couldn't find her. He came back in and got a, a huge, you know, found this bag and put every single knife in the kitchen in it and then went looking for her. And uh, about 10, 20, 30 minutes later, my mom comes back and say, come on, guys, we're about to we're about to go, we're about to go. So she had called the police. We went down to the local the police uh, took, took, uh, picked us up, took us down to a little local uh, cafe. And we waited on my sister to come from Ohio to pick us up. And then my grandmother later told me, my father's mother told me that he called her that day. He said, Mom, I'm going to kill Eunice. I'm going to kill Eunice. I'm yeah. tired of her. We have this problem, that problem. And she talked him down, right? Thank God. She said, you know what, Jesse? I love you. And I know you love your children. Think about your children. If you kill her, you're going to prison for life. Yeah. And they're not going to have a mother. Yeah. You don't, don't do that to your kids. Yeah. You know, and Damn. thank God he was able to talk her down. But, you know, several things like that. And then and I remember in middle school, man, I, I have some some horrible stories I went through. I remember one time he told me to and, and all this is in the book, of course. You know, that one time he told me I was in sixth grade. He said this is the summertime. He said, take a shower. You better have, have been showered by the time I get home from work. And I said, yes, dad. He comes home. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. I hear his car pulling up in the driveway. My heart starts to race because I know I didn't shower. As soon as he comes in, he says, Justin, did you shower? I said, no, no, sir, I did not. He was always, yes, sir, no, sir. No, sir, I did not. He grabbed me by my shirt and my ear, drug me in the bathroom, turned on the water in the kitchen sink, grabbed me by the neck, stuck my head underneath the water. Now, I don't know if if you or maybe some of your your, your audience remembers those vials of v, uh, V8, I believe it is, or V6, yeah, hot, man. Hot, oil, yeah. hot oil treatment, right? So with those little vials, you're supposed to run them underwater, warm water to get them warm a little bit before you put them on your hair. He boiled them on the stove, man. Oh, my God, bro. And so there's boiling water. So then he comes and, and puts my neck back under the water, pulls it up, and puts that hot oil all on my scalp, burnt my scalp. I still have a scar on my head from it to this day. It's probably why I can't grow any hair now. But uh, And I couldn't cry, right? He said, you know, don't cry. You, you can't cry. So I held all that emotion in. And then he finished washing my hair in the sink. Scalp's burnt. Let me go. I just dropped to the floor in the bathroom and I couldn't couldn't cry. He said, now get your ass in the shower. Man, I got up, got in the shower. I couldn't hold it. As soon as that water hit me, man, I, it just came out. Just woof. Dude, that's you know? crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was crazy, man. I remember so those are maybe some of the worst years from sixth grade to eighth grade, man. And uh that that caused me to, you know, uh get off into a lot of things. And he wasn't in my life through high school. And, uh, you know, 13, 14 years old, start drinking and smoking a lot of weed and doing all these other things. And then my, my oldest son was born when I was 19. I was a young father and, you know, was with his mom for a bit. And then we we went our separate ways. And then I was a single father for many years until I got married in 07. And uh, my wife and I, we were looking to find our spiritual path. We We stopped going to church and then we started going to church again. And just didn't sit right with us, the traditional Christian way that we were raised oh, in. I, no. I was one of those kids, Jay, that went to church literally literally three, four, five days a week, man. In fact, my mom's a licensed evangelist. She has been for about 30 years now. So It's funny you know, how I find so many people like us. So I was Catholic, but same story. It's all the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it's all mm -hmm. the same. They just have like offshoots of Abrahamic teachings, you know, again, to make money. You know, some guy got a bright idea that he would change the religion to make money for his church or his congregation or his pastor. I mean, it's all insane. But look, bro, you know, as well as I know, and we'll finish the show with this because I, and we can talk about this. But and this is deep meditation, a lot of introspection and contemplation. And of course, also being gifted and led by brilliant, you know, teachers of mine, you know, through books. But the second coming actually means not, you know, again, and, and, and you know, I, we, we talked about this, but, you know, most of the Roman Empire or the Roman Catholics invention of Jesus of Nazareth is probably made up, right? Like there was an avatar being, you know, every single avatar being from every culture was probably the same, you know, from, right. from, from the Christos, which is again, Yeshua, aka Jesus or the Christ to Ahura Mazda to uh, Muhammad to um, Krishna. I mean, I can just keep going, you know, uh, Osiris. I mean, all of these, you know, teachers from various cultures uh, were literally beings who incarnated into this third dimensional matrix reality to teach us that the way out was within. And, you know, there's a great, uh, philosopher, uh, teacher uh, named Theodore Nottingham, who was at one time a 
uh, Presbyterian priest who then became this like Gnostic scholar. And he really went into the deep readings and teachings and words of quote unquote, whoever Yeshua, AKA the Christ, AKA Jesus was. And he said that the one statement, and you already said it. And again, people like us are all resonating the same energy that the kingdom is inside you. Yeah. I and my father are one. The energy of I and my father are one is the higher self as the father, as the one, as you. Mm-hmm. And people have to understand that you don't need to go to a church on Sunday or to a house of worship or to a temple or to a mosque or anywhere to find God, to find divinity, to find, again, the energy and frequency of everything and nothing. And you know, I know you know what that means because you've done ayahuasca. I mean, anyone that's done plant medicine and actually felt what I call the source field, universal consciousness. It's yeah, a vibration, brother. right? Yeah, it's a yes, vibration. Uh-huh. And, 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 and so when you get that a level of awareness, the whole man in the sky on a chalice judging you is instantly dissolved. Right. You don't have any of that anymore. You don't have the fear-based entrainment that religions taught you when you went to church on Sunday and you had a bully pulpit sermon saying, you know, are you a fearing Christian, a God-fearing Christian? Are you a God-fearing <laughs> Catholic? You know, all this insanity that has been, dude, now this is, you know, important because this has been entrained in our brains and our parents and our their parents and their parents. This is generational, transgenerational trauma. Yes. Brained, you know, literally entrained in our brain. So to overcome this type of entrainment programming is very difficult. Mm-hmm. It takes a plant medicine experience. It takes a near death experience. It takes traveling beyond, again, the normalcy of the matrix. That's right. You, you have to get there. And again, you're never going to get there until you choose to go down that path. And, and for a lot of people, as you know, they abuse drugs, they abuse alcohol, they abuse substances. I mean, even sugar. And they get to a place of like they're right at the death door, physical body death door. And all of a sudden, you know, the light of being turns on in them and says, no, I want yeah. to. No. Right, right. There's a million ways to get there, you know, a lot of ways to skin the cat. But it's like once you get to the level of awareness that, you know, God, source consciousness is within you, then you're not playing those games anymore, bro. And it goes back to what we said before we talked on the show it's a lot easier for people at that level of consciousness or awareness to opt out of the matrix. Yes. yes. Because the system wants you to pick a side. Yep. They want you to be a Republican. They want you to be a right winger. They want you to be, you know, this or that. They want you to pick a team in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, it never, ever ends keeping (laughs) you divided. Now, Now, granted, you know, I have a really good friend who's like us who always will battle me about sports because he's like, yeah, but Jay, you know, he's a contrarian and he's a brilliant guy, but he'll always be like, but if we're here to enjoy the ride, why wouldn't we watch sports all the time? Right. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, you know, look, I, I'm not going to say that watching Joe Burrow on Sundays isn't cool. Right. But like <laughs> you can't throw your life away. Exactly. By consuming all the time. There That's has right. to be a mediation of c- creation, conscious co-creation with every now and then consuming to pass the time again through enjoyment. It's there's nothing wrong with your, you know, your wife or your kids, you know, watching a show on Netflix, even though Netflix is completely demonic, but watching a movie (laughs) with your children, watching a show, you know, on nature or any of those things. Like, you know, I, I get it. It's not, we're not, we didn't come into these physical bodies to not enjoy our life. Right. Right. But it's about, it's about moderating so that creation always, um, you know, overcomes consumption too many That's people right. as you know the machine the technological matrix machine wants you consuming 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 it wants mm-hmm. you porn it wants you netflix it wants you sports it wants you video games and then it wants you watching their news mm-hmm. and then they ultimately want you plugged into the metaverse so they can capture your soul and you become written off AI, baby yep <laughs> yeah, AI, exactly. so i mean like yep. it really is just the awareness and you get the final say but it's the awareness that divinity is within you I don't care what you think or how you think of it. You can look at it as Jesus. You can look at it as Muhammad. You can look at it as Krishna. You can look at it as a blue, you know, angelic being that, you know, comes from uh, Andromeda, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's just the awareness that you literally are the access point. Like you Mm -hmm. said, I and my father are one. Yes. Well said, brother. 
That simple. And and man, I couldn't agree more with everything you said, brother. You you hit the nail on the head, as they say. And, you know, just going back to the fear aspect of things, which is what a lot of people deal with. I think you threw a, threw a number out there. You said, but maybe 80 percent of society um, deals in this low vibrational fear. We have, have all these fears. And then you said something else as well. When you, you, you said that we're choice, we all have a choice to make. Right. And I That's think right. a lot of times people deal with these fears and these insecurities because they haven't found their purpose because right. they're they're plugged into the matrix. with. Porn. They don't realize it's, they have a choice, bro. It, exactly. They exactly. say to you, but my job, bro, my job made me get the jabby jab. Or they say, but bro, I got bills. Who's going to pay for my kids? They don't think outside of the constraints, as you just said, that they've been programmed to think. Exactly. Exactly. But I tell you what, each and every one of us has a purpose here. Right. And if people want to find their purpose, they have to do exactly what we've been talking about for the last hour or so, right? Being vulnerable, s surrendering, as you said, which I love. Totally. And, and work on self and, and develop that awareness and that knowledge of self. And Totally. When people are able to do that and, and just have the balls to do it, man, you know, your life can be changed forever. I went through it. Jay Campbell went through it. A lot of people have totally. went through it. We made the choice. We made the decision to come up and be better and to do better, not only for us, but, but for others as well. Just like your, your your awesome podcast here, man. I mean, you're, you're, you're serving humanity in what you do, right? So are you, you man. You bring, so are bringing you, bro. that knowledge, bringing that wisdom. You're, you're you're telling people what they really need to hear. It's, it's no BS coming out of your station, bro. You know, same as you, man. And, that's and, why. And but that's why you and I are talking right now, man. I mean, yeah. it, it, you know, we are, as I said last time, you know, again, the children of the light. Mm -hmm. And it's now that time in history. And I'm sure, like I told you, bro, like it's been many times we got here, we blew ourselves up. Yeah. Yep. But here we are now <laughs> again on the cusp. And I mean, it is a choice. I mean, there's no doubt. But as I told you, and we already said it in the show, I really do. Again, I'm. A, it's a knowing. It's not a belief. Mm -hmm. um, those of us who have evolved right now to where we are, bro, we're getting out of here. I don't ask me how it's going to happen. Don't yeah. ask me. I mean, I know why, but don't, you know, I have no, I have no ability to forecast how it happens. I mean, is it a vibration right. where all of a sudden we just get carried away uh -huh. and all of a sudden only people like us are around us and everybody disappears and it's still the same earth. You know, is it ships coming down <laughs> and, we, and, we, and you know, and we exit through uh, stargates or wormholes or portals or something. Maybe, 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 <laughs> maybe. all of the above. But I really, truly think that the awareness of coming into this dimension and realizing it's about connecting with the higher self, it's about evolving and growing the soul, it's about surrendering and being okay with negative. You know, again, the contrast to not label things with judgment, condemnation, or blame. And again, just just like you said just a minute ago, just to serve everybody, like again, serving creation, serving humanity, not serving self. Yes, you serve self at times, but most of the time right. you're serving everyone. And if that is how you live your life, you got nothing to worry about, man. Nothing at all. You said it. Well said, brother. Nothing to worry, worry about. That's the way you do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 100%, bro. I mean, man. Well, look, man, is there anything else you wanted to say? I mean, from a standpoint of, like, promoting um, your book and all that stuff, like, before I let you go, like, you know, how, how can I have people? Where, where do we want to send people for where they want to go? So, you know, definitely my website, thehiddengateway.com. You, you can purchase my book on there. You can also go to Amazon as well. Um, th those are two main things. I, I drop a new episode every Thursday. have had some some great guests on there, as, as you mentioned earlier. I had the, the one and only Jay Campbell, which is uh, <laughs> yeah, right, the one and only. I got to <laughs> Billy Carson, as I told you. Um, Billy and actually, or actually, we have a, a call uh, tomorrow to talk about stuff with the show and all that oh, stuff. Okay. I think the last time I talked to you, I told you we were going, bro. We couldn't even go. Uh, Peru had a massive transportation. Transportation. You told yeah. me about that transportation. Yeah. Issue, no, I mean, yeah. that, see, that's the thing is like, without going doom and gloom, a lot of the third world nations right now are unraveling. Yeah. And it's all because of what's happened in the previous two years. You know, they've run out of money, you mm -hmm. know, the energy constraints. I mean, look, man, I, I would say for us to just end the show and, you know, really manifest the new earth of the golden age, getting here as fast as possible, just to continue to put intention of light and love into the universe. And just, you know, every night you go to bed, just say, look, I see and I envision and I manifest the new earth and I, I and I will be a conscious co-creator in the golden age. And however we get there, because we know there's going to be a lot more darkness before there's dawn, yeah. that it's okay that this is the path that I consented to go on. And I'm grateful and surrendered to be on it. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for that, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you.
Appreciate you too, Justin. So again, guys and gals who have come on the Jay Campbell podcast and listen, always support the amazing, amazing people that I bring on. Of course, Justin Williams, go to his website, thehiddengateway.com, buy his amazing book, In the Eyes of the Father on Amazon. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. I will see all of you guys very soon.